Welcome to Let's Train Taekwondo. My name is Adam Gerald, and we're going to be training Taekwondo, just like it sounds. So this is going to be a follow along series. So get up off the couch or wherever you're sitting down and watching this. Go ahead and try to watch this on a big screen so you can see more of the details and follow along with me as we get started. The first few videos are all going to be very introductory to Taekwondo. So very basic if you have Taekwondo knowledge. I recommend still watching it and making sure you get the little details so we can build that solid foundation, but it's going to be a little bit slower pace at first as we start to get into the higher levels, it'll be a lot quicker pace and a lot more of a workout. So today, like I said, we're just getting started. We're going to start off with a warm up because even if we're not going to be working extra hard and getting extra sweaty today, it's still good to be able to warm up. So, one of the things that I like to start off with my warm-ups is just jumping jacks. So let's get started. Jumping jacks. Anytime you're getting started with a warm-up, you want to just kind of move the muscles first. Right? I like jumping jacks because it gets my body moving in this lateral plane of motion. Right? My arms are raising, my legs are raising, I'm raising my adductors and my abductors and legs. Right? We're getting all warmed up here. Bounce with those calves. Make sure you're not holding your breath when you're doing this either. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put one foot in front and the other foot in back. We're gonna put our hand up next to our face and we're gonna put our opposite hand from our foot that's out in front. And then we're going to jump and switch. So this is another one I like a lot because like our Jumping jacks, we're going side, in the side whispering motion. This is going in the front and back. My arms are going forward and pulling back. My feet are going forward and pulling back. Now, when you're doing this with your arms and your hands, try to bring your hands back to your face every time just so we can start getting some good habits built in right off the bat. You can touch your knock and knuckles to your cheekbone each time so that you know that you're connecting your face. Going. Let's get a few more. All right, take a breath. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do 10 squats. So feet about shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointed outwards, hands up in the center, and we're gonna bring our elbows down to our knees, trying to keep our head up as we do this, and then come right back up. So that's one. Three, four, five, six, seven. Make sure your heels stay planted. Eight, nine, and ten. Now we're going to do ten push ups. And as we do this, I want your elbows about 45 degrees away from your arms. So don't tuck them down and don't raise them high up. About 45 degrees. If you need to, you can burn your knees, but I would prefer that you try starting off on your toes. Ready? And begin. Drop down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make sure you keep your head up and ten. Take a breath in and out. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to point our toes off to the side. So here. Arm up to the side. We're going to reach out just like this. I want you to keep that back heel down on the ground. We're going to turn our body facing this way, right? Shoulders facing that direction. And we're going to kind of bounce and do it nice and slow. So when you're starting off working out or warming up, you want to make sure that you're doing dynamic stretches, not static stretches. Dynamic stretches are one where you go to that range of motion, the end of the range of motion, and then come back. And a lot of time as you're doing this, your range of motion will start to extend a little bit. A static stretch is when I go down to the full range of motion and I hold it. Those are great for lengthening the muscles at the end of the workout, not at the beginning. Let's go ahead and do a few more. You should be feeling it right here on the inside. Now, we're going to do the other side. Turn your toes outwards, other toes inwards, and dropping down. Again, feeling it 
on your hip adductors, right? So those are the muscles that bring your legs together. They add your legs together. So we're stretching those muscles out right now. Notice I'm not going fast. I'm not trying to bounce hard and all the way down. Just nice and light. Let's get a few more. All right, from here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna raise that back heel up. So now the heel is off the ground. I can place my hand down if I'd like, and I'm going to drop my hips down as much as I can, keeping my back leg on. Now this is going to stretch your hip flexor. So as you're standing here, it's the muscles in front of your hip. All right, so this will be the muscles that raise your leg straight up into the air. Back heel is off the ground as you're doing this. So notice I come up and then I go down. Come up and down. Now from here, I want you to drop that back knee onto the ground. Sit up, hands together. And push back as you push your hips forward, right? Keep that chest nice and upright. I'm gonna do a few here as well. All right, let's switch sides. So back heel off of the ground, and then drop that hand down onto the ground and keep your knee up, right? Come up and drop down, up and drop down. Stretch those hip flexors. Now, so we'll bounce in motion, but not too fast. Now we're gonna drop our back knee down onto the ground, hands together, and push that hip forward. Feel that stretch right there in the front. All right, so now what I want you to do, I want you to spread your legs out relatively wide. We're going to drop down onto one. If you can, I want you to try to keep your heel on the ground, but if it does raise up and you have to go onto your, the ball of your foot, that's fine. But I do want you trying to work to get to this heel on the ground position. From here, we're going to turn our chest towards our leg and with our opposite hand of our foot, we're gonna reach. Now, once you're here, I want you trying to get your chest close to your knee. And now we can come up and down with this, right? Maybe I come back and reach if you're not quite as far. You can come here, right? Stretch those hamstrings. The hamstrings are muscles right there on the back side of the back. Get that chest nice and close each time. All right, now I want you to come up and try to keep that other heel on the ground and we'll switch sides. And reach with your chest. And you can reach with the arm as well. But what really gives you that stretch is when you can touch your chest to your knee and rotate your hip. Don't focus on that one too much. Turn. Just try to get that chest nice and close. Reach, you can. All right, now we're going to come up and put our hands on the mat right in front of us. Now we're going to drop down to one side and then the other side. One side and the other side. Just like this. Try to keep your knees or the knee pointed nice and wide as you do this. It'll also help you get the hip adductor stretch in there as well. All right, let's come up, shake it out a little bit. We'll do what I call modified hip twist, where you show the inside of your foot, and then you show the inside of the other foot. So I'm kind of bouncing, just like this. Notice how my belt swings side to side every time I do this. Get a little bit of blood flowing back through those legs. All right, take a breath. Breathe in. 
and out. From the nose, out and out. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the four stances that are in our introductory course. So our first stance is going to be our attention stance. And you'll go to attention stance when you hear the command chariot. Chariot literally just means attention in Korean. All right, so we're going to have left foot comes in, our hands, and your knife hands, and we're gonna bring them right to our side. Chest is up, toes are together. So now stand here, here, toes together, chest up. Inside, whatever position I'm in, left foot comes in, hands go together, chest is up, stand at attention, and stand like a statue. Just like this. This side, cherry up. Again, cherry up is the command, but it just means attention as well. And you'll hear that when you go right here. And now whenever you're doing cherry up, don't do this. This, uh, I call it a penguin, a penguin clap, right? Hands going here, not the big sound, just go to attention. And the next thing is going to be our ready stance. So for ready stance, we're gonna start out in cherry up, and then you're gonna hear the command jumbe. Jumbe also means ready. So we're going from our cherry up, attention, cherry up, ready stance, jumbe. And when we do this, our left foot is gonna step out. We're going to have the ball or the heel of our foot up as our hands come up and we're gonna take a deep breath in. And then we're going to slowly, as we exhale and make fists, drop our heel down. Our hands are gonna end in position at the exact same time that our heel ends. Cherry up, hands come together, left foot steps out, jumbe. I breathe in as my hands are open and come up, they come up about chest height. And then so I exhale as I make fists and bring my hands down. Now my hands are going to be at the same height as my belt. So they're not gonna be down here, right? They're gonna be up at the same height as my belt. Notice my elbows are slightly bent. And then I want about one fist distance between where my hands are and the knot in my belt. And then as you're looking at the front, I also have a fist distance in between my hands. So I'm not down here, I'm up here. Elbows are slightly bent, arms are slightly up and out. Cherry up, jumbe, ready. Cherry up, jumbe. It's gonna take a few seconds to do this. It's not, it's not this. It's also not like in karate, how they, this down strong. It's nice, relaxed. Okay, so that is Jumbe or ready stance. You will also hear Jumbe as getting ready for other things, but you'll typically hear a command before that, right? So it might be like fighting stance, Jumbe, and then be go to your fighting stance or your sparring stance, and then Jumbe would be the command as get ready. But if it's just cheer up, Jumbe. It's always gonna be this one unless designated by something else. So that is our second stance. So our third stance that we're gonna cover is going to be our Taekwondo sparring stance. Okay? So our Taekwondo sparring stance looks like this. Okay? Our knees are bent always. We're not gonna have these straight legs, but we're gonna kind of be bouncing and moving in between. So it's, these are, it's gonna be a dynamic stance now. It's not gonna be a static, no moving. Taekwondo stances. That's a dynamic stance and I'm kind of moving around. My hands are up. I have my backside hand up and around my chest, protecting shots in my chest and protecting my head. And my other hand is gonna be with my fist is about shoulder height and it's floating, right? So I'll typically refer to these hands as what this is called as floating. They're moving around. They're not static, right? They move. They have to be ready to move at all times. Try not to open the hands fully. I have a habit of doing that sometimes from other martial arts. You can relax them though, so you should be able to see through your hands. That way they're not tense and tight the whole time, but you don't want to have them fully open because getting kicked in the fingers really hurts. Trust me, it really hurts. Don't do it. So hands are kind of open, nice and relaxed, and moving around. Our heels are in a relatively straight line when I'm doing this, so I'm not quite squared, right? You shouldn't be able to see both my hips. You shouldn't be able to completely see both my feet. One foot is kind of high. And that allows me to do spinning kicks a lot easier if I was standing in a stance over here, right? That back spinning kick is a lot harder to do. So keep that in mind. It's so that we can kick backwards just as easy as we can 
forward, my body laid it off. My chest is about 90 to 45 degrees. Again, it'll vary. Sometimes I'll come into the front, sometimes I'll switch the back. This is again a dynamic stance. When I'm moving, I'm up, I'm light as I'm doing this. Just like this. Yep. So that is what our sparring stance. Good. The next one is going to be our fighting stance. So I designate these mostly because fighting stance is going to be a little bit better for punching as Taekwondo sparring stance is purely for Taekwondo and kicking. It doesn't really have the defensive or offensive punching aspects in it. So this one is going to be a little bit more squared, but not completely squared. So I'm going to do here. My feet start off shoulder width apart, and then we can either step forward or we step back a little bit. So we are still angled about 45 degrees with our hips and our shoulders. Our hands are going to be up just like this, either where you're knocking knuckles, like you're knocking on a door, or by your cheekbones, or sometimes they'll be up even higher, right? Around the eyebrows or slightly higher than that. They'll kind of go here. This starts to happen once you start getting tired, it start dropping. So I want you to at least try to keep it around that cheekbone. A good reference point anytime you're doing punches is just to feel your knocking knuckles on your cheekbone or just above your eyebrows, right? Feel your face as you're doing this so that you can protect. Here, notice how you can see both of my feet this time. I'm not hiding one behind the other. And this allows me to get more hip turn with that backside forward so that I can get a little bit more power and a little bit more reach in my punches. So there's reason why we'll do this. Here, again, just like the fighting or our sparring stance, our fighting stance is a dynamic stance, right? I'm moving around whenever I'm doing this. I'm not staying completely still, right? I wanna be able to move. And then if you are not moving, make sure your knees are still slightly bent. The reason the knees always have to be slightly bent is because you can't move with straight legs. My leg is completely locked out. I can peg leg move, but I can't actually move. The movement happens from the bend in our knees, extending at our quad and with our glutes to press, right? That's how movement happens. So if I don't have that bend, then my muscles aren't gonna be able to contract and actually move. So I have to have that bend there in order to move. Okay, so that was our four stances. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cover footwork pattern. And so this is a very, very simple footwork. We're gonna start in our sparring stance. Remember sparring stance, heels are in a line. Chest is 90 to 45 degrees off and I'm more bladed as compared to my fighting stance. So what we're gonna do is we're just bouncing here and we're gonna switch just like this. Notice my feet completely replaced each other and then my chest completely faced the other direction. I don't wanna switch like this. All right, see how my chest didn't really move? I wanna switch here and now I can pull back front hand as I push forward with my back hand it helps turn my chest and hips completely. Now I'm not sure if my mic is picking this up but my feet are actually skidding across the ground. I'm not jumping up high. If you're high in the air and you get hit you just gonna fall. You want to stay close to the ground so that we can press off if we need to move quickly. So we're here and switch and switch. So let's go ahead and let's do 20 switches. So bouncing on my hand. Oh, no. So knit. Hands are relatively up, floating. No, that's it. Yes. Good job. Good job. Ah, hook. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good Yes. Good. Yes. Now try not to switch so much that your toes point to the side. You want those front toes to the front. Yes. Good. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to continue counting in Korean or if I'm just going to go to English so I stop messing up numbers. But that's beside the point. All right. So that was our switching. Again, make sure that we just turn all the way and we're not turning those front toes to the front. Unless we're setting up for a spinning kick of some sort, then it's okay to switch right into what you know you're going to do. If you're just switching, make sure that you switch and aren't really telegraphing anything. Those toes back to the front, and we kind of keep this movement, a little bit of bouncing motion, 
but not bouncing up off of the mat. Next thing that we're gonna cover is gonna be our hand techniques. So these hand techniques are gonna be done from our fighting stance. Sparring stance, fighting stance. Fighting stance is a bit more upright, feet are a little bit closer, but my hips are more squared. That's when players are completely bladed off. They're about 45, not quite 90, about 45 degrees back. So our first one is gonna be our jab, just like that. And the big mistake most people make with the jab is they raise their elbow up and then they do this back fist here. So what I want you to do is think about keeping this elbow pointed down to the ground as you extend out and rotate at that last second. Here, extend out and rotate. Notice how my elbow is gonna come up first. It stays pointed down and back, down and back. Now when you're doing this, make sure that your other hand stays nice and close. Again, I like to touch my own face. And for now, I would like you to touch your own face as well. That way you know that it's there. Now, there's stuff going on with the hips, but I want you to focus on the hand at this point. When I'm doing this, I want to punch with my uh, two big knuckles. So, these two knuckles. And I want you to make sure that your wrist stays straight. So a lot of people have the habit of doing this, where they point their knocking knuckles forward. I want those big knuckles forward. And then here, it's going to be slightly like this. All right, so I'm not completely flat where I hit with all four. I want to turn it those big two knuckles to be my point of impact. Curl thumb is over these first two. Don't go in here and don't go right here. Have it over these first two. And we're going to go back to doing our jab. Now remember, jab is a lead hand punch. If I switch my lead, so now my right leg in front, and my right hand is my jab hand. If I have my left foot in front, then my left hand is my jab hand. I'm turning my shoulders a little bit with it, and I'm keeping my chin tucked with my elbow, or not my elbow, my shoulder, nice and high. So I go for this. That way, when people punch at me at the same time, because they always punch at you at the same time, you're not getting hit, ideally, because you're blocking with that shoulder. So here, elbow down, here. Let's go ahead and let's do 10 of these, nice and slow. One, two, three. Notice how my hip is turning. I'm not quite showing you the feet yet. Hip turns into a four. Five, other hand at the face. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's go ahead and let's switch sides. Let's do the exact same thing. So now I have my right foot in front and I'm going to jab with my right hand. Now, most of the time, just practice this nice and slow while I talk. Most of the time, people are going to be with their right hand into the back side and the left hand to the jab because most people are right hand dominant and you want your strong side towards the back so you can really power, hit with powerful strikes. But I prefer to practice on both sides because I don't really plan on getting too many fights. I like sparring, but I don't fight very much. So it's okay if I practice and become a little bit more ambidextrous instead of just really, really good on one side. But if you're one of those people that just wants to get good on one side, well, I'm not there to make sure that you practice both sides. Again, elbow is down until I rotate. My elbow does point off to the side at the very end, but you can't see an elbow where it's not chicken looking in. It makes it a lot harder to read. This makes it easy to read that, hey, something's happening with this arm if that shoulder pops up or that elbow pops up. Here, All right now I'm gonna do 10, nice and slow. I want you to do this along with me, making sure that your hip turns but we're not quite raising that heel. We're keeping it here, and we're just extending that hip off the side. Nice and slow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's your other hand at your face? Ten. All right, so that was our jab. The next thing that we're gonna cover is going to be our cross. So now, our cross is our rear hand punch. So we're standing here. Now our rear hand is going to punch out as our other hand goes right back to our face. Again, protecting. You can touch your cheekbone or you can touch even higher. This is a little bit safer, but your hands will start dropping as you get more tired. 
and we bring it back. Just like with our jab, I want you to try to bring that shoulder up. See from the side, you can see my chin is slightly hidden instead of here. See how my chin is completely open? And here. Cross and back. Now with the cross, I want you to look at this back leg. So I'm here, I press out, and now that back heel raises up. What that's doing is I'm getting what's called triple extension. I'm extending at my hip, my knee, and my ankle to press off and really power through the ground. So it's not just turning, right? So look, I can turn and I can raise that heel up. Yeah, I can do that. But since I'm starting with the knees bent slightly, I'm able to press since all of my muscles on this back leg are loaded, I'm pressing through the ground to punch. And then I'm bringing it right back. Press through the ground and back. Extend using your hips, your quads, and your calves, push through and back. Turn that shoulder all the way to the front, raise that shoulder up and back. Notice how the knot in my belt, which was started relatively forward, maybe slightly off to the side, faces 45 degrees past this inner line whenever I'm doing my cross. Just like this. All right, so now let's work out 10 of them, nice and slow. Again, making sure the elbow doesn't come up first, and then we're turning our hip, pressing off that back leg. Ready? One, two, other hand at the face, three, return back to the face, four, don't drop it down, five, from the face, back to the face, six, press off the back leg, don't just twist it, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we're gonna switch sides, we're gonna do the same thing, other side. So now I'm gonna use my left hand as my cross hand. One, make sure you have that nice, good fist. Thumb over the first two knuckles. Two, wrist is straight. Three, other hands protecting. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we did a lot more on the other side, so we're gonna do ten more on this side. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, chin is tight, slightly tucked, 15, not up and high, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, and that was our hand techniques, our jab and our cross. From here, the next thing that we're gonna cover is going to be our blocks. So we've got two blocks that we're gonna be learning today. Our first one is gonna be our low blocks. So we're gonna start off in our jinbe position. We'll start with one hand on top and we raise the other arm up slightly. For our low block, we wanna make sure that our palm is starting towards our face, so that top hand. If we start with our palm down towards our shoulder, we don't get any rotation. We wanna be able to twist with each of our blocks. Same thing with our punches as well. But we're here, starting up, palm towards the face. Other hand is down. Then we're gonna be our setup position. And then we're going to bring it down as the other one comes back rotate the one that came back goes right to the hip bone on the side and feels through the belt your other hand as you're looking at it from the front should be in front of that hip bone and then there should be this gap here right you should see a little bit of space i don't want to open it though i want a hole if i open the hole something can come in through the hole and hit me so i want to close the hole but i do want a little bit and this is blocking ideally a roundhouse kick or something moving up in this direction towards our ribs and we're blocking. So we wanna make sure that our arm is perpendicular of the contact that's being made or thrown at us. And then we'd have our other hand coming on top, palm towards the face again, and bring it down and rotate. On top, down and rotate. So I want you to do this along with me. We're going to start up. This is gonna be our setup position, so one, and then we're going to go down. So we're just gonna do one side at first. You can mirror me or do the same side as me. I don't really care. But we're going to start with one hand on top, other hands down, set up one, and block two. Set up one, and block two. One, notice how my other arm comes out. This hand, palm towards my face, but closed. Two. One, two. One, two. 
we start to feel more comfortable with it, we'll start adding hip motion to it. But for now, let's just get the motion down. One, two, nice and relaxed. All the tension's out of my arms, bring it down. That's when I have the tension too. Relax, tight. One, two. Now let's go to the other side. So let's put our other hand on top. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, nice and relaxed up top, palm towards the face. Other hand, palm down, four. Hand all the way to our side, not out in front of us. Pull it back almost like you're elbow striking it backwards. Three, four. Now we're gonna do alternate sides. One, two, three, four. One, two, relax, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great, that was our low block. Next one we're gonna do is going to be our high block. So a high block looks like this. The setup position, we're gonna have one arm pointing up. Right? You can have the hand pointing towards the inside. And then our other hand, this is gonna be our blocking hand, which is across our belt, palm towards the ceiling. Make a fist, we're going to raise it up. The hand that's blocking is going on the outside of the hand that's not blocking. As I go up, out and I rotate at that end right here and I rotate now as I'm doing this my wrist is almost in line with my opposite ear giving me that blocking surface area a lot of problems people make is they go here and they're not quite blocking right in that center so we bring it across here and here and we rotate and now this outside forearm bone this is called our ulna right our ulna bone we're blocking with that bone specifically so I don't want you to twist so much so that your palm is pointing out and you're blocking with the meaty portion of the inside of your arm. I want that ulna bone as we're blocking. Okay, so now we're gonna rep this out in the same way that we did the last one. So we're gonna start off. I'm gonna start with my right hand across. You can start with either way. Left hand if you wanna mirror me. Right hand across, left up, bring it up, up, and then at that last second, I rotate, I rotate the bottom hand and I rotate that top hand. Look at the alignment is your wrist in line with your opposite ear. Good, and bring it back. One, two, one, two. One, palm is up, foot closed, two. One, two, one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing with the other arm. Three, so bring that other arm across, bring me to my left. If you wanna mirror me, it'll be your right. Cross, palm up. Four, three, four. Make sure that other hand goes right to that belt or that hip bone. And an elbow striking back. Don't have it up in front of you. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Wrist in line with that opposite ear. Not too short of that center line. Three, four. Three, four. Now we're gonna drop down this top one and bring the bottom one across. One. Two, drop down the top one, bring the bottom one across. Three, four. Nice and relaxed. Drop down the top one, bring the bottom across. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm not really using any power. I'm just going through the blocks now. I want you to try to make it fluid. Top hand drops down, bottom one goes across. 
top hand drops down, bottom across, high block, high block, high block. Keep this motion going. Take a breath. All right, so that was our walks. Now, the last things that we're gonna to learn today are gonna to be our basic kicks for the introductory level, okay? So the first thing is going to be a front knee. And so I call it a kick, but this is a knee strike. It's a leg technique, all right? So we're gonna start here. We can start in a fighting stance, we can start in a sparring stance, we can start in something in between, all right? So just get into some sort of a stance ready to fight ready to spar and we're going to drive our knee straight so we're raising it up and pushing forward with it so it looks like this okay so i'm bringing my knee up as i'm shooting my hips forward notice how my hips came in front of that back leg and that back leg my toes started off towards the front. I'm actually gonna rotate them 30 to 45 degrees to help with my hip rotation to push that knee directly towards the front. Raising up and pushing. Now with the hands, I don't want stiff hands as you do this. I want you to move your arms. I want you to think about driving a big steering wheel of a bus, right? And then we're gonna have to turn the steering wheel towards the side that we're doing the knee. Boom. My hands are up, turn the steering wheel. And for now, I want you to point your toes downwards as we go for that knee strike. So here, knee strike, and bring it back. Rotate that front foot. Raise up and drive forward. Up and forward as we do this. Then we're gonna bring it back. Okay, let's go ahead and do 15 on each side. Ready? One, two, exhale every time you do this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with our other leg. So let's go ahead and put our left leg into the back. Or your right leg, depending on which side you did. Switch legs simply. Hands are up. Bring the knee up, drive it forward, rotate a little bit, push those hips. Forward, not so much forward though, that you just kind of fall, but forward and then bring it back, pointing your toes down on the other side. Ready? One. Now try not to bring it out and in. You want to have it going straight up in the center line. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and fifteen, ten, and up. All right, so that was our front knee. So our front knee is going to lead to our front snap kick okay so i want you to hear me define that front snap kick not just a front kick they are different so we're for the introductory course we're only going to be doing a front snap kick because it's easier a front kick is more effective though all right i'm not going to quite talk about the differences in those yet but i just want you to know that there is a difference between a front kick and a front snap kick so with our front snap kick we're going to be bringing that knee up and when we were shooting that hip forward, now we're going to be extending out. And notice how my toes are pointed. 
back. So I'm not kicking with the ball of the foot like I would for a front kick. I'm kicking with the top of the foot. Now, because I'm kicking with the top of the foot, I actually only have two targets. My two targets are going to be to the groin, right? The groin of your opponent, or to the head and body of a bent over opponent. I wouldn't be kicking to the head of a standing up opponent. It's just not gonna work out. But if they're bent over, maybe I kick them in the groin, and then I kick them in the head because they're bent over, that's fine. Or I can also kick them in the body of the bent over opponent as well, okay? Yeah. So, just like we were doing that knee, drive it, kick, and back. Now, one of the big things that a lot of people make, or a big mistake a lot of people make, is they won't go to full extension, right? So the knee is fully straight, or they'll kick, right? Get full extension, and then after full extension, they raise their knee up even more, and it creates this circle looking kick, right? So we wanna avoid that circle kick. We want to just kick and bring it right back. Get your full extension and bring it right back. Ready? Front, snap, 15. One, two, three. Don't drop the hands down. Four, you can move them, right? Sometimes I go out, five. Sometimes I'll turn it in. Six, seven. You'll notice my hands are not up, but they're nice and relaxed. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Nice for shots, same thing. I like, ready? One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And take a breath. So that was our front snap. The last kick leg technique we're gonna learn is gonna be half a roundhouse kick. It's not even a full roundhouse kick, it's half of a roundhouse kick. So the reason I have it split up so it's a half roundhouse kick instead of a full roundhouse kick is because I really want you to focus on pivoting. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do a roundhouse kick. By the way, roundhouse kick looks like that. That is one way of doing a roundhouse kick. Again, there are a lot of ways and we're gonna cover a lot of different ways. But one thing that all of them have in common is this, rotating. Rotating on the ball of the foot. Not the heel, the ball of the foot. If you rotate on the heel, you might get your toes caught. It's gonna stop your rotation. You also don't have the ability to fall back onto the heel to get your balance back. It's not a good thing. And sometimes if you rotate really hard and your toes get caught, pop goes the knee. <laughs> not something we wanna do. So rotate on the ball of the foot this part, and we'll do this. So a half round house kick is going to look like this, and back, right? I'm bringing that knee up and around. I want my head, hip, and knee all in one straight line. This is what I call an L shape, because it creates this L when the hip is bent, it's not fully extended. You can do round house kicks like that. We will get to them later. For now, I want head, hip, knee all in alignment as you're doing this. And your goal is to rotate this bottom foot 180 degrees so that it points all the way back behind you. It is not necessary to rotate that much when you're actually kicking somebody. But for your training goal, I want you to be able to do that so that it's easier to rotate every single time when you are kicking somebody. Okay? So again, here, bring my knee up and around. And then I want you to practice this counter rotation as well getting back into that spot. So it's 15 on each side. Ready? Again, foot and back. Head, hip, knee, all in alignment, well shape. Two, and rotate. Three, keep 
you don't quite get 180 degrees, that's okay. Just try for it every time. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. We're gonna do the same thing with our other side. So let's go ahead and switch legs. And we're gonna do 15 half roundhouse kicks here. Ready? One. Two. Try to get that 180 degrees and bring it back. Three. Four. Head, hip, knee, alignment. No L shapes. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to quickly recap the things that we've covered today. We started off with a warm up, right? Some jumping jacks, some switches with punches, and then we moved into a little bit of dynamic stretching. Remember, dynamic means moving into the full range of motion, not just getting there and holding. That's static. After that, we went over four stances. The four stances were attention stance, straight up, jumbe, or ready stance. And we went into our sparring stance and our fighting stance. Okay. After that, we went over our footwork from our Taekwondo sparring stance, which was switching. Just like that, making sure our chest turns all the way, our feet ideally in, pointed towards the front when we're doing that. Then we went on to our hand techniques. We went over our jab, which is a lead hand punch, keeping the chin down, rotating at the end, not raising up that heel, turning your hips, and a cross, pressing off that back leg, raising your heel, shoulders up, chin is down, other hand is at the face, and bring your right back, making sure we turn our hips, a jab, and our cross. After that, we went over our blocks. We had two of them, it was low block, making sure that our palm starts towards our face, and then goes down and rotates at the end. And our high block, palm starts up, and ends out, blocking with that ulna bone, and having our arm far enough over, not too short. After that, we went over our leg techniques. First one was our front knee. Then we went over our front snap kick. And last was our half roundhouse kick. From here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start cooling down and we're gonna do a little bit more static stretching. So static stretching is usually done at the end of class. Ideally, you're already a little bit warmed up. And so from this point, we're gonna be cooling down. So we're actually going to cover the same stretches that we did at the beginning. And now we're just gonna make them static. First one is gonna be our socket stretch. We're gonna drop down nice and low. If you need to, you can put the hand on the ground. Make sure that back heel is down on the ground when you're doing this. You can feel it on the inside of that back leg. You might even feel it on the hamstrings of the front leg as well. So drop this down and hold it. Now when you're doing these, you ideally wanna hold them for 20 to 30 seconds. If you hold them for too short of a time, you really don't get that stretch. What's happening here is there's slight muscle tears that are going on, but we want them really little and ideally not painful for us, and allowing our muscles to start to realize, hey, they need to relax and stretch instead of hold tight and tense. So we have to make sure that we do hold them for a long enough amount of time to actually get the 
lasting stretch. Again, a dynamic stretch is great for warm-ups and great for being able to kick through the range of motion without hurting yourself. Sag stretches are great at the end because they help to actually elongate the muscles so that we're becoming more flexible. And now let's go to the other side. And now you'll notice after holding a long static stretch for a while, uh, coming up out of it isn't quite as comfortable as when you come out of a dynamic stretch. And that's okay. Like I said, we're actually elongating the muscles here so that they become more flexible later. And ideally, the more flexible you are, the less you have to warm up. You should always warm up. And I can be split. But I don't warm up, uh, I still can pull things. So I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to warm up every time. Let's go a few more seconds here. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to rotate that back leg and we're going to go ahead and drop the knee down right away here. I want you to push those hips forward. Try to point your hips towards that front heel. If you can, try to touch it. Obviously, you're not going to be able to. But try. Push those hips down to the ground. Really feel that stretch right here. If you're not quite feeling it, lean back a little bit as you're pushing those hips forward. You can set that sign down if you need to for balance. If you can't quite do that, put this up here. You should be feeling it right on the front of that hip, on those hip flexors leg straight up. If you're really flexible, you can put this hand all the way down, reach up, and grab this back leg and pull it in. Just like this, you'll get a little bit more of a quad stretch and more hip flexor stretch. Now we're going to go ahead, switch sides, dropping it down, just like this. And you can put this hand down if you'd like, or you can lean back. Just like this. Take a few deep breaths in. Try to relax. Try to feel that full stretch going. Try and get that flexibility. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop down. And this time, Instead of being on this foot, we're actually going to bring it in so that the bottom of our foot is pointed in towards our knee. And we're going to reach with both hands as much as we can, again, trying to get our chest down. If you need to, you can do the finger walk method where you pull yourself, walking your fingers. If you need to, you can bunch up your uniform and pull yourself in with that if you're not quite all the way there able to grab the foot. If you're able to grab the foot, go ahead and pull the top of it back so that that heel goes slightly forward. It'll stretch that uh, hamstring or the calves as well as the hamstrings. So you'll feel it a little bit more kind of in the back of the knee as well. Lean, and now let's hold it nice and tight. Some nice deep breaths. Switch sides, other leg straight, bottom of my foot, goes in, reach, and we're trying to get our chest close to our knee. Your pelvis should tilt a little bit, and that will stretch the hamstrings as well. I don't want you trying to just arch your back here. Pinch your shoulder blades together and lean forward as you do this, but that'll really make it so that you feel your hamstrings. Even if my arms are out, Pull my shoulder blades back. See the difference? And that flattens my back out and ensures that I'm not quite reaching with my back and I'm reaching with my hamstrings like that. Let's hold this a little bit longer. All right, let's stand up, shake our legs out. Up. Now we're going to bow out of class. So when you bow, lean forward. I want your eyes still fixed. I don't want you to lean down. I want you to see my as you bow. And good luck. Great job, guys. Now, if you enjoyed this, I will see you in the next one. If you didn't enjoy this, go ahead and leave me a comment below where I could have done better. They will get more.
difficult to progress, but that's still a solid foundation. The, the direction dynamic.